How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Part 6. Refitting the reverse screw to the engine to see whether or not my simple modification, shown in the previous episode, was successful. Removing the eccentrics and rods from the expansion links, and once the engine was unscrewed from the wooden base, the high pressure and low pressure eccentric sheaves could be slid off the crankshaft and the eccentric straps were removed. Finally, it is time to have a look inside the high pressure steam chest. But first, I need to refit the reversing screw, and this was a really difficult job. In this clip, I'm making it look very straightforward and simple. It is not supposed to be made like this. The wheel has been silver soldered onto the shaft, so I have to slightly bend everything to fit the tiny 7BA bolt in place. The problem was I couldn't apply too much pressure because I didn't want to break anything, but I got there in the end. The good news is, and I really don't know how this has happened, but I removed just enough metal from the shaft to allow the valve gear to be moved into the correct position when in reverse. And to prove the point, here is a valve fork exactly in line with the eccentric rod, whereas before it was miles away and would not go into reverse at all. Flushed with success, I refitted the nut to the bolt that holds the reversing screw bearing to one of the uprights. Just like this in fact, it's a very simple arrangement, but it works fine. I removed a very small amount of metal, so now, when it's in this position, there is more than enough threaded shaft to operate the die block. This is a better shot of the valve gear with the engine fully in reverse. It may be a little bit tight, but I can unscrew it half a turn. Just like I did when the engine was running in forward gear, it makes it smoother. This is the valve gear at the high pressure end, and the time has come to remove it. This has been quite difficult to film, because a lot of the time my hand is in the way of the camera. To safely extract the die block from the expansion link without dropping it on the floor, I'm using a piece of welding wire. I always have this in my toolbox. And it's very useful for a variety of jobs including this one. In the last episode I showed the threading of this part of the eccentric sheave. And I also showed the small crack in the cast iron. When I tightened the grub screw this is what happened. The original fixing method really wasn't good at all. In the next episode I will show a far better alternative for fixing eccentric sheaves to crankshafts. The group screw in a very thin piece of cast iron is not a good idea. Possibly okay on a very small engine, but even then I wouldn't do it if I could help it. This bolt was quite difficult to extract, it was a tight fit in the hole. I've turned the engine around and I'm now working on the low pressure side of things. And in no time at all, the valve gear is disconnected. After removing the flywheel, it should be possible to slide the eccentric sheaves off the crankshaft at both ends. But I can't do that whilst it's on this wooden mounting. Every time I want to remove the eccentrics or adjust them, I need to remove the engine from this wooden base. So I'm going to make an alternative base. The owner mentioned that the height of the engine is a bit of a problem in the boat, but there is a solution. It's a glass fibre hull, so I would make a special floor that doubled as a mounting, so that the flywheel and all the big end brasses will be able to go down into the deepest part of the hull in the boat. I'll mention this idea to the customer the next time we speak. Of all the miniature steam engines I've ever worked on, I find these triple expansion engines to be the most difficult. There's no margin of error on hardly any of it. And when you look at them, they really are quite a piece of work, and they're not easy to build. Here's the other eccentric sheave. This one didn't break, but there's a hole that's been drilled in the wrong place at some time. And the problem is, this part of the engine is very visible. And it's one of the first things I noticed when I looked at the engine on the bench. I removed the first of the eccentric straps from the eccentric sheaves that fit at the high pressure end. Both of the sheaves are turned as one piece, and this is quite difficult to do. And also, there is an offset, and if you don't get that right, the engine will not run. And if you refit the eccentric sheaves the wrong way round, it won't run either. I've put the valve gear in plastic bags for two reasons. 
one, so I know where the parts are, and two, so I know which part of the valve gear fits at which end of the engine. I'm temporarily loosely screwing the engine back onto the wooden base, just so it sits there and makes it more stable so it can't be knocked over. This afternoon I'm going to take a trip to Blackgate's engineering because I need to buy various parts for this engine, and some of the parts that I've written down on a piece of paper so I don't forget them are shim washers, so I can fit all of the drain cocks in the correct place. I think I'll have to buy a couple of packs. I'm going to have a look in the high pressure cylinder. I'll run the video to high speed while I remove all of the 7BA nuts. The good news is all of these nuts are on the studs and all of the studs are screwed firmly into the cylinder block. To separate the steam chest cover from the steam chest I'm using a Stanley knife blade. You have to be careful if you do this. There is a danger of cutting your fingers, but worse than that, you could destroy the gasket which is fitted between the steam chest and the cover. I removed the steam chest cover which was a good fit on the studs. And here you can clearly see the function of the slide valve. It goes up and down as it's supposed to do. Looking at the position of the valve gland, I really don't think there's any packing in this. When I spoke to the builder, who's the owner, he said, well, I didn't have enough, I just run out. I will pack the gland using some Teflon coated yarn in due course, but not yet. I started to file these valve forks to clear the expansion link, but when they're in situ, it's quite difficult to do. Now I have the part in my hand, I can do the job properly, and I'll show that in the next episode. What I'm doing for the moment is taking off the gland cover. Two nuts, very easy to undo. Well, one of them was anyway. Once I'd removed the second 7BA nut, I had to carefully use a screwdriver to lever the gland cover out of the hole. And that is it for this episode. I'll leave you with this shot of the port face. Well machined, not worn because the engine hasn't run, so I think everything in this area should be good. That's it from me for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.